It is homecoming weekend at the University of Washington. Let the sound soar. Going into that Stanford game in 99, we were a team that had a chip on our shoulder. He's got daylight touchdown. We wanted a shot at a national title. They came into the Stanford game, still in the hunt for the Rose Bowl, but Stanford was the team to beat. They throw the ball to Dermonte Pitts, touchdown. We just made sure that when Stanford came into our stadium that they knew that they were going to be in the battle. Rose Bowl, touchdown. It was a battle for the ages. I have seen some strange things in this stadium. That was the strangest. To this day, I love playing in it, but I wonder what it would have been like to be a fan watching that game. October 30th, 1999. Stanford at Washington. The most fun I've ever played in the game. The greatest individual quarterback performance by Marcus Tuiasasopo. Say who, say what. You know what comes after that. Places quite like it in decibel count. The Washington Huskies at home against the Stanford Cardinal. Most meaningful game this. Have a look at the Pac-10 standing. Stanford, the only undefeated team in the conference. Washington has one loss. That to Arizona State. Sun Devils playing in Oregon later this afternoon. Going into that game, we were very confident we could go up to Husky Stadium and pull off a win and really cement our place at the top of the conference. We had set ourselves up where if we could beat them, we would jump ahead of them in the standings. So they knew if they beat Stanford, they, they would be right there for the Rose Bowl, even though at that time they had three losses for the season. So it was, it was a little bit of one of those years where they weren't a real dominant team, but even though they had some limitations, they were right there playing for the Rose Bowl going into that game. I remember going up there, supreme confidence that, that we were going to win that game. We knew we had our hands full, but we didn't care. We wanted to show them what we're all about. And in my first year as the Husky coach, this was a really important game because I wanted to legitimize my tenure there. It was just going to be a battle when we're going to stop battling until the end. Washington kicks off. Stanford won the toss and asked for the football. And they can have it now, first down at their own 35-yard line. So let's see what the tactics are as we have the first snap of the afternoon from Husky Stadium in Seattle. The pass is down the middle, and the pass is overthrown. Russell Stewart, the intended receiver. The stadium, I remember it shaking. It had so many people there. It goes straight up. I remember it being a packed house, and the importance of that game um, was not lost on Husky fans. They were excited and came there to you know, watch us lose. Second down and 10. They go to the running game with Allen. Allen runs into the right side and finds nothing there. The defense for the Washington Huskies. The big guys are in for a busy day because we think this may be one of their best group of blockers and runners that they have faced. The linebacking core, number 17, Lester Towns, probably will have big numbers today, but the outside backers have got to stay home and play their lanes. The defensive secondary, they face the same thing that the front does, probably looking at some of the best athletes they've faced all year. So it is third down now and eight for the Stanford Cardinal in the opening possession of the ball game. Husak steps away from the pressure, pulls it down, and takes off, and will come up short of the first down by a yard and a half. The tackle was made by Jeremiah Farms, number four, and Esau was the man that flushed the Stanford quarterback. If you might call Todd Husak, Todd Nosak. He does a great job of getting rid of the ball. This is just a fine athletic move on his part as Isa blows the chance to bring the quarterback down in the backfield, and he comes up one yard short after that run. Sean Tolpenrood is in the punt. He had a miserable start last week. He went 16, 19, 26, and uh, this one is a little better. It hangs up in the wind a little bit, and it is caught by Joe Jerzinka, who never understood the fair catch signal, and Joe is taken down at about the 25-yard line. So from the 25, it is a first down for Washington, and Marcus Tuiasosopo will pull the trigger for the Husky. My staff had just come from Colorado, and so we tried to put our Colorado offense in at the University of Washington. They kind of famously put in a more of an option offense that would really fit what Marcus Yasasopo could do. Tui was always a winner and always had a team attitude. When it got time to go into the game, 
he was just a gamer. As we led up to that game throughout the week, we just talked about, hey, they're coming to our home. We're not going to let them come in and do what they want to. We're going to hit them, and we're going to pound them on offense. And so we had that attitude the whole week. I think it was one of our best weeks of practice. And, you know, we were ready. We were focused. He's straight back. He fires a bullet. The pass is caught up at the 32-yard line by Joe Jarzinka, who starts at wide receiver. Gerald Harris has a very heavily bruised thigh. He's hurting some. And you know about Chris Jurgens being out with a sprained ankle. And so Joe Jarzinka gets the call to start at that wide spot. And he is a tough guy. Tough guy and a fan favorite. Uh, great to start for him to get the uh, first catch and get this crowd going. Marcus's pass is away, and it is caught at midfield by Dane Looker. Perfectly thrown ball. Perfectly thrown ball under a lot of pressure from Marcus Steen. He came on the blitz, and this is a, a remarkable throw. Watch number 53 come in and just drill the quarterback. That could have been a penalty. Watch how this ball floats over Tim Smith's hands right into uh, Looker's for the first down. Big play. Dane Looker showing up again. He often does that when he's really needed, and he's needed now. Luis Asasopo will change the play. Step back, go back under now, and get a penalty flag. As they come, they didn't burn the clock. Somebody must have moved, probably procedure, as John uh, Jim Fogeltant steps up to make the call. That big Jim. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. It's first down and 15 as the ball comes back to the 45 yard line. And Tui Asasopo throws again, throws it hard, and it's caught again by Jarzinka. That's down to the 40 yard line. It is just short. It appears of the first down. And it's a good job of Tuyas Sopo seeing this huge cushion that the uh, Cardinal will play today. They do not want to get beat deep, but I think that they've got to come up a little bit closer on the Husky wide receivers. They're, they're probably still shell-shocked from the speed of the Trojan receivers from last week. But uh, this group here is not nearly as fast, and Jarzinko will be the first to tell you that he relies more on his quickness than his flat-out speed. They bring the chains out, and uh, it isn't much, but it is not a first down. Keith, and looking at Marcus Tuiasa Sopo on the sidelines, grimacing just a little bit, he may have a problem with his right leg, uh, not running back to the huddle as gingerly as he usually does. Tough guy, though, man. I was having a lot of doubts, and so were 70 something thousand at the University of Washington Husky Stadium. They could see from even way to the top deck that Marcus Tuiasa Sopo wasn't right. And, you know, how could this kid answer the bell? But then I watched Tui's body language, and this was the mark of a true leader. I think it was landing on the turf that was the major reason why I got injured. And I was just thinking, man, I, I can't leave this game. Everyone's counting on me. You've heard the term ass over tea kettle? He got ass first. Tea kettle might have been fine. The ass was not. I told Coach Newhouse, I said, hey, I'm going to play. I'm going to give my all. But it's your job to take me out if I can't play at the level that I know that, and you know that I can play at. It looked like a bruised tailbone or something like that. Uh, limping off the field, you see that happen, especially to a player who's that important to the other team's success, go down and you really start to gain a little more confidence. Marcus just had a tremendous pain threshold and he was a warrior. And it's one of the more courageous performances I've seen is witnessing the bruise after the game. I don't know how the guy made it through that entire football game. I just don't. Second down and very short. Be a good time to go deep with it. Instead, they give it to Willie Hurst, and Willie will get the first down at about the 39-yard line before uh, Stockbauer takes his feet away. So from the 39 for Washington, it is a first down. Double wide, bottom of the picture. Hurst, the deep back. He has the Sopo calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Gives it to the up man, the fullback. And the Cardiff will rumble for a couple of yards and again Sharker Steen who's very active here in the early going for the Stanford defense makes the tackle. That's the first option of the uh, triple option. Washington will employ four different options today. The dive option that we just saw they'll come with a speed option a counter option and something new for Stanford they haven't prepared for will be a guard option where they'll bring the guard out and lead to Iasa Sopo on the corner. It is second down and six.
Maurice Shaw. Mo Shaw, who's starting to play very well for Washington. It is third down and four now as we come back to the snap of the ball. Resting at the 33 yard line. Pressure passes away and intercepted. Intercepted, and there's a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. It was Tim Smith, the big safety, who stepped into the pack and pulled the ball away. What much on the ball, and it's holding call against Washington, and I'm sure the interception will stand as Stanford refuses the penalty. So there's your first turnover of the afternoon. Holding on the offense, the penalty refused. First down. On Tim Smith's interception, uh, I still remember it to this day. Uh, I was dropping back. Uh, going through my read, and then they had a pretty good rush on. And I was trying to get it to Jeremy Stevens when I should have just thrown the ball away. I thought I could stick it in there and give him a chance, and uh, I threw it right to him. And they had him double covered. So it was a poor read by me. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't have uh, too many more of those. So first down, Stanford up near their own 47 yard line. No score in the first quarter of play. Pitch it back to Allen. Good block, but he can't get it to the corner because the Huskies see that the man who came over and uh, shut the door on him was 95 Jabari Issa. He made him come back inside and big old Lester Towns was waiting. Yeah, really important for uh, Jabari Issa to have a good game. This entire defensive line has been uh, rather disappointing. You see what Allen did last week against SC. That was huge for them, but uh, they're not going to make a whole lot of yards running wide against this Husky defense. Second down, 11, a loss of a yard. Coy Wire is now in at the tailback position for Stanford. Huskies show blitz. Blitzing man missed Wire. Wire stepped away from him, and another one broke a tackle. He's loose. And finally, is shoved out of bounds by Jermaine Smith. But it's a big play for the Cardinal inside the Washington 20 to the 17 yard line. Well, broke the tackle of Akbar twice. And the blitz here of Lester Towns. The Huskies show it early. That allows the fullback, Casey Moore, to find where Towns is. There's the missed tackle by Akbar on number one. Akbar 0 for 2 on this one run. <laughs> Heads up play here at the end, though. Troy Walters does not block Jermaine Smith in the back. If he gets anything on him, gets in his way, it's touchdown. But it's first down. Inside the 18 for Stanford. Ball flipped outside to uh, Durante Pitts. And Durante Pitts will get it down to about the 11, close to the 10 yard line for the Cardinal. Stanford, uh, a couple weeks ago against Oregon State, got two fourth quarter touchdowns against the Beavers on a similar type of situation. Last week they were perfect in the red zone, but when you blitz, sometimes you don't have those safeties there to make the tackle. And if your safety misses two tackles in one play, you're in big trouble. A 37 yard run by Coy Wire now has Stanford knocking on the door on second down. Cusack gives the ball to Wire again and Coy finds daylight to the five and that'll be first and goal Stanford. Curtis Williams saved the touchdown. And you notice Keith uh, after that one running play where they tried to go wide they've come right back with two straight running plays right up the middle. This is a very good very experienced offensive line for the Cardinal and they're led by their great center Mike McLaughlin. Making his 42nd consecutive start. That's pretty remarkable. It is. Every game he's ever played at Stanford, he's started. Cusack back to wire. He's got daylight touchdown. So the Stanford band, small in number for this trip, at the other end of the stadium, making all the noise they can. Zach Watcha is the left guard here. Watch him get out in front here. Good block by Casey Moore, but that's an outstanding job by Zach Quasha squaring up on the defender and not even allowing him to see the running back. Baselli for the point. It's good. And we are at 9.04 to play in the first quarter. The Stanford Cardinal get a turnover and take it to the bank. Mike Baselli will kick it off. And Paul Arnold waits with Terry Tharps. Tharps is wearing number 10 for the game today, and he brings speed. 
I mean speed. You get a chance to watch him right here. Give him a crack. Go around the corner. Long way to go. Bad decision. Ball comes out. Goes out of bounds. Huskies keep it. Brian Allen, the running back, coming down to make the tackle. Straight ahead to the 12. As you're north and south right there, just going straight at Stanford. This is an experienced defense. A lot of seniors on it. Uh, the guys that uh, looking forward to, to that winning season and uh, getting all caught up in what's been happening there on the farm. This defensive front for Stanford's pretty good. Lee, Curry, and Andrew Curry made that last hit. Austin Lee and Sam Binner teaming up with the keeper of the trench dogs, Mr. Howard. Out of bounds across the 35 yard line. Rock Nelson got the block that got him around the corner. And once he turned it, there was a lot of room and first down Husky. G option. The G stands for guard, which means there's going to be a pulling guard. So we're going to block down on him with our tackle pulled and read the end of line defender as Marcus would pitch or keep off of him. And some of our formations, because of the option being able to go to both ways, we felt like we had a schematic advantage over Stanford in that game, and it certainly turned out that way. And it's first down Washington at the 40. A scoring response would come in handy here for the Huskies. There's an outside speed stop on the option with uh, Willie Hurst carrying, and uh, Primus and Howard bring him down. They gained eight on the last play, second down and two with Bo Shaw in the backfield. Bo gets it and squares up that big old body and slams into the stack and moves the chains. It looks like he's got it. You got a new burner in on the field now for Washington, number 83, coming right at you there. That's Quentin Morgan out of Texas, and he's another flyer. They need some speed, and he's one of them. And the ball ricochets off his shoulder pad. It's fine to be able to run fast, but you got to take the ball with you. <laughs> Boshaw, the ball carrier, the ball rolling around and rolling out of bounds. Hey, this was the uh, fourth type of option for the Huskies that they want to run. It's a counter option. This was a good pitch by Tuias Sopo, and Shaw just looked like he took his eye off the ball. Watch the quarterback is going to come out here and then reverse back to the outside. Good pitch. Shaw looks up, sees Real Johnson there, and it, Shaw is lucky that that ball was kicked out of bounds. Yep. I thought it went out with a little more velocity than it actually did. Sort of trickled. And it's third down and 13 now. And Stanford gets caught in the neutral zone. They were trying to anticipate Real Johnson trying to come early. This may be a free play. And it's completed to Todd Elstrom, and Elstrom is down at about the 40-yard line, close to a first down. This really important play by Tuiasa Sopo because he knew he had Willie Howard in the neutral zone. I bet he even saw the flag fly. Here's the penalty right here on Howard jumping into the neutral zone. But this was third down and 13, and so Tuiasa Sopo's looking for someone to pick up that yardage. Gets it to Elstrom. And they're close enough to uh, bring out a measurement. Just a fraction. Betty, you know, if, if Tuyasa Sopo quits on that play, they get five yards. So then it's third and eight. But by continuing on with the play, he's gotten his team down to a spot where they should be thinking about going for it on fourth down here. Travis Pfeiffer will come in at tackle and replace uh, Willie Howard for the moment. We've had a lot of these so-called stingers, and that looks like that may be what that is, where you get a, a jam on the arm or shoulder, and you get a little nerve sting, and you, you lose strength in the arm for a little bit, and then it goes away. Let's hope that's all it is for Willie. It's fourth down and about six inches. They're going. And he's got it. Tuyasa Sopo, who is at, in there at about 215 pounds, a big, strong guy, and he just slams on in there and rides right behind uh, his big old center, Kyle Ben. To give me your pocket, Kyle, I'm going with you. Right there this time for Willie. They were looking for him, and they got him for a loss. 
That's the biggest uh, headache you have for Kent Bear, the defensive coordinator for Stanford, is how do you prepare for a quarterback that uh, has the ability to improvise? And Tyrone Willingham told us, he said, you know, it, it's tough on us. It's got to be tough on their coaches as well. A lot of these coaches worked with each other, too, the assistants at Idaho and uh, here at Washington and, and Washington State and at Stanford and various places. So they all know what the others know. That probably makes it plan. Louis Yasin Soko throws the pass intended for Jarzinka. It is incomplete. Waiting for the call on it as to whether or not uh, they had a chance to pick it off, and they didn't. So 5.28 to go in the first quarter. Stanford leading 7 to nothing, And the Huskies now are looking at third down and 11. And Sharkestein gets his no second home run shot on the quarterback. Watch number 53 right there. Defense, they made big plays. They created turnovers. They got to the quarterback. They created um, tough situations for the opposition. And I think that was a great trade-off. If they could get us two to three extra possessions a game on offense, we would take advantage of that and make sure that the, the other team couldn't keep up with us. Ball is on the 39-yard line. And 2-1. They burned it. They don't get a flag. Tuiasa Soko pulls it down and takes off up the middle of the field. And he's brought down at the 31-yard line. 49-yard field goal try coming up here by John Anderson. Not the freshman. Plenty of leg. He got it. 49 yards. I think you can ask any real, you know, Husky fans about the, the kicking situation in the past. You know, sometimes it wasn't always consistent. And to be able to finally go out and, and, and find a, a young, great kicker from Florida and have him come in and just do his thing. It's just great because, you know, without all three phases of the game, you can't complete your task. And a kid from Florida, Keith, no less, Boynton Beach, had one against Oregon State for 50 yards. This one might have gone 55. Just a moment ago, number 11 going off the field, rather tenderly, I might add, on his way to the clubhouse. In the locker room, I just let the trainers continue to monitor, monitor it, stretch it out. Uh, stay, you know, I, I think I was moving, I was on a bike. I, I didn't sit still. I just, I didn't want to get stagnant and allow the swelling to take over. And, uh, like I said, our trainers did a great job and, uh, and I appreciate all the help they, they did for me and they allowed me to stay playing in that game. John Anderson, number 15, just kicked a 49-yard field goal. We'll kick it off. Waiting for it. Taking it is Ryan Wells, wide receiver for Stanford. He's got two blocks, three blocks, four blocks, and finally across midfield. So it's a big return by Ryan Wells. And for the special team circumstances, looking pretty good right now for the Stanford Cardinal. That's a 47-yard kickoff return. Well, and, you know, Keith, if you look at the coverage, look at these four men right here for Washington. They're coming down the field, not exactly full speed. Wilbur Hooks gets pushed to the outside, and now all the way out to midfield for the Cardinals. Fine return. Put it on the Washington 49-yard line and a first down for Stanford. You've got Kerry Carter in there as a single back, his first appearance, freshman from Canada, big guy, 225. Ball handling by the quarterback, Husak, set it up for Troy Walters, touchdown. Beautiful ball handling. Husak hooks up with Walters for 49 yards, and Stanford has its second touchdown. Washington didn't have much luck stopping Stanford that day either, and there was an awful lot of back and forth by the two teams, and there was a time there when it looked like Stanford was in control of the game. It was a play that we had used a few times throughout the season, and uh, it, it's really set up to draw the defense, the safeties up on the fake reverse. It was a special play that we had worked on, and we were hoping to use it in that situation, and it worked out perfectly. Perfect execution by the guys up front, Troy, uh, Troy made the play. So 5-8, Troy Walters closing in on all kinds of record. Catches another one. One play, 
Bingo. 14 to 3. Stanford leads Washington. Usak turns and hands it away to Kerry Carter. And the big back from Vaughn, Ontario, Canada. Moves it over the 30-yard line. Move your chains. 11 yards on the pickup. And uh, that pass is incomplete. Intended for uh, McCollum. Second down and 10. Cusack throws it away. He had a man in the neighborhood, the fullback, Moore. And a lot of huskies coming down his neck. So he unloaded it. When you're down by 11 points, you try to seize the momentum back from your opponent. And one way to do that when you're on defense is to bring different varieties of blitzes. That time, uh, the Huskies dialed up the corner blitz. Anthony Bontour, number 23, almost got the Husack. Here's a different set now for the Cardinals as they split their backs. You got Coy Wire in there, along with uh, Moore. And with the crowd picking it up, trying to help the defense now. Husack, Coy's football team, taking his time. Good protection, penalty flag. The uh, ball is thrown complete to the tight end Russell Stewart who's a young fella from Bellevue across Lake Washington but the penalty flag waits for the decision well the penalty flags against that young man from Bellevue Washington Usek did a nice job of looking up at the play clock but as he was calling signals uh, Russell Stewart was a little over anxious he knew quarterback was calling his play it's third down and 15. 15 from the 26. Pressure coming. That's grounding. They flagged the quarterback for grounding. Lester Towns led the charge against Todd Husak. There was nobody in the area where he threw the ball. This is a team that only has eight sacks on the year. This will not go down as a sack for Lester Towns, but it's just as good as one. This team had 51 last year. They're getting better, though. They took down the Cal quarterback three times last week. So Topin Rood will be sent out to punt. And he's standing in his end zone for the snap. He should hit it around the two-yard line. If he goes to three, he may get it blocked. John Sandy is the snapper. Went to the three and got away with it. Jarzinka. Fumble. Stanford recovers. 48 yard line. Fernandez. Ryan Fernandez. Down on punt coverage. Fernand, uh, Jarzinka, who never calls for the fair catch unless it's absolutely required. Again, got himself in close quarters and they steal the ball. Fernandez with the left hand. In fact, I think Quentin Morgan may have knocked the ball away from Joe Jarzinka. Morgan was back there with Jarzinka, and it appeared they collided before Fernandez even got there. Can't be a hero all the time. Sometimes when you're looking for field position in midfield, you don't need to run the ball in, in tight quarters. Going for the big one again. That's intercepted. What a great interception that was by Anthony Von Tour. Literally a one-handed pickoff. Von Tour played a huge part in that game versus Stanford of getting the momentum back on our side. When it was a time where Stanford really could have took control of that game. And shoot, when that happened, we all jumped off the bench and said, let's go. And you know, just got us going. <laughs> We move along to the second quarter now. Todd, what's the latest on number 11? Well, we, of course, when Marcus Tuyasasobo goes to the locker room, most of the training staff goes with him. They just gave me the actual prognosis. He has injured his gluteus maximus. So Marcus uh, will play on, but that's the injury. It was like a deep hip bruise and a hip pointer, taking some ibuprofen, some medicine, and, and I really wasn't feeling uh, too much pain. It's just pressure from the swelling. and. 
A lot of the reason why I was, you know, always moving around on the sideline, no one ever saw me sit down, was just to keep the blood flow moving. Marcus Tuiasasoko working with a sore rump. Steps away, gets a pass away, complete to Jeremy Stevens, the tight end, and that catch is good to midfield. And Willie Howard coming up the middle again deals a blow to Marcus Tuiasasoko. Working against Rock Nelson, who's coming back from injury as well. Here they are right here. Nice swim move by Howard. Now watch the escapability of Tui Asisopo. Gets a nice lane and finds his big tight end for a first down. Ball's right on midfield. Get about eight yards on the play. One thing Rick Newhouse is going to do is he's going to get everything he possibly can out of Marcus Tuiasa Sopo before that uh, leg tightens up. But every play, you can see him getting up and limping again. It's got to affect him at some point. It's just more of a, a nagging deal from the pressure. It was like your your leg was a little heavier uh, than it normally is, and. You know, for the most part, you know, I felt pretty good throughout the whole game, you know, other than that slight pressure. Not bad on one leg, huh? Second down, three. Oh, show in the backfield. Straight back. Nope. Intended for Dane Looker. One area you might look for, they, uh, muscle problem for Tui Asisopo to affect him is in his throwing because it is on his left side when he steps forward on his uh, plant foot, that left foot, it's going to be very painful for him. Remember, he bruised the uh, left gluteus maximus. Watch as he steps forward. That's a lot of weight going on it, and that did hurt him. Third down and three. They'll option with it, and he won't get it. Stanford took away his choices, forced him to keep it, and he couldn't turn it upfield. And again, it's Steen right there. Fourth down, Huskies going. Well, he's outside the 40 yard line on fourth and two. Keeps it. Got it. First down at the Stanford 30 yard line. Tim Smith finally made the tackle. Walker, watch how tenderly he's walking. Yeah, you call them a warrior, and that's a perfect description for this young man today. It's that G option again. They're going to pull the right guard. Chad Ward gets the block on Stockbauer. Good patience by Tuiasa Sopo, and a whole lot of fortitude. They put in a play they called the G option, and studying the Stanford film that week, they had noticed some things and how Stanford defended the option, and so they went to this G option, and basically Stanford never really caught on to it the whole day, and so that kind of uh, epitomized what Marcus Tuiasasopo was about, was about just kind of finding a way. First down at the Stanford 31-yard line. Shaw is out, and Paul Arnold is in the backfield for Washington. A lot of speed. Keeps it. Tuiasasopo delivers it. Inter Accepted. It hit the Stanford man, Frank Primus, right in the stomach, but he was tangled up with the intended receiver, and the pass is incomplete. This could be a very veteran ball club again next year. As Marcus Tuiasa Soko goes quickly to Gerald Harris, and Harris makes the question. The catch for about eight yards on the play. Third down and two now for Washington. And the ball off to Maurice Shaw. And Mo Shaw did not get the first down. Stanford studded, big guys in the middle. Steen is back in there, that big old linebacker. He's stepped right in alongside uh, Willie Howard, and they stuffed the play. And so it's fourth down and two. And here is that young man from Boynton Beach, just up the road from Daytona Beach. This will be a 40-yard field goal try. He kicked one earlier in the first quarter from 49. A lot of leg. Looks good, and it's right down the highway. So two field goals in the first half for young John Anderson. And your score now is Stanford 14, Washington 6. to 
to see if he can come out in the third quarter. Steve Axman, the quarterback coach. Now they better find a good masseuse or masseur in that locker room and think loosen them up. Think you can do it. And the ball to the up man on the option. That'd be your fullback, Pat Conniff. And Conniff will work his way up to about the 15. I don't think that's something you could pull loose, Dan. It's going to be with him a while. He might be carrying that to Tucson next week. Like falling off a horse, huh? <laughs> For a ladder. Or a house top. Four out of the troop. Third down and three down for the Huskies. Keeps it. I don't think he made it. Rial Johnson on the left side made the tackle for Stanford, number 97. This is a great play by Rial Johnson because he's trying to force the quarterback to make a decision. He attacks, now he goes away, keeps his eye on Tui Asisopo, then comes back and keeps him from picking up the first down. They bring the chains in. Make sure he didn't get it. He seemed to get those breaks that game where the referees were involved. Uh, just another example, but Tui Asisopo has a knack for if he needs five, he usually gets that five. And that time, uh, you know, boy, close call. Yeah, they, they got the spot. The 18, first down. Wants to throw. Has a man in the middle of the field. Oh, great catch, Gerald Harris. All thrown behind him. Remarkable catch by Harris. And remember, he's playing with a bad thigh bruise. He made a great catch last week against California. So he's making himself a nice little highlight reel. This one might go right to the top of the list. Tuiasa Sopo is going to throw a bullet right down the middle. Watch this one-handed catch thrown behind him, and Harris brings it in. You know he knows that hit's coming from Tim Smith, too. It's first down at the 45. Is your single back? Has it on the option to the outside? Great speed, but the Cardinal played pretty well as Smith finally comes over to make the tackle. Tim Smith's a pretty good sized guy, recruited as one of the better high school quarterbacks in the country, grew to be 6'4, 230. He's from Coalinga, California. And he moved into that strong safety position, and he does tend to leave a knob on you once in a while when he runs into you. And of course, being an ex quarterback, very, very intelligent. Of course. <laughs> and one of these days before I die, I'm going to get me a big ugly to work with. <laughs> well, I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. <laughs> Disagree with what you're saying. Husky fans rooting for the Ducks this weekend. Oh, that's that's hard. That's hard. Duck roots for Husky or vice versa. That goes to Ayasa Sopo. Wanted to throw deep. Nobody down there. Takes off. He's remarkable. He's absolutely remarkable. He is a tough guy. 29 yards on that play. And it's at the end of the play that probably shows uh, both his toughness and his smarts. He wasn't going to be satisfied with just getting the ball inside the 25 yard line. He's looking to go all the way. But once he gets in trouble, watch where he heads right to the turf. Ball is on the Stanford 23 first down Huskies. For the option. And on four yards. Got 100 yards so far. That is amazing. It's going to be officially second down and five, but it's at least five and a half, closer to six. Mark it according to the next pass. Here's the pitch outside to Maurice Shaw. Shaw picks up a first down as Big Mo rounding into shape. 
He's a good sized guy. He comes in at 225 pounds. He's a load. As we developed and kind of found our identity, you know, we just turned out to be one of those teams that just always scrapped to the end. We always believed that the game is never over until it's over. And, you know, it didn't matter if we were down by 21 points or 28 points in the fourth quarter, we were gonna keep on fighting. Ball is just outside the 10 yard line where it's a first down for Washington. This is a good drive for the Huskies. But Shaw is taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Austin Lee. That's what this uh, front four for Stanford does so well is they get penetration. A lot of tackles for loss, a lot of sacks, and Austin Lee doesn't get a whole lot of credit. But watch him, number 94 gets through that gap and has the strength to fight through that straight arm by Mo Shaw. Ball is almost touching the 14 yard line, where it'll be second down. Three fifty-five to go in the first half. Fourteen to three, Stanford leading. Fourteen to six, Stanford leading. Ball thrown to the end zone. Touchdown. Gerald Harris made a remarkable catch to keep the drive alive, and then goes into the end zone and reels in the touchdown. It was pretty basic play. He was just running a go route on the outside, and I just held the safety on our inside receiver, which was Jeremy Stevens, and there was a spot to throw that ball at the right corner of the end zone, and I just I wanted to give Gerald a chance, and I was able to make the throw, and he made the catch, and you know, kept us alive in that ball game. And so the score, 14 to 12. They go 92 yards at 11 plays, and they use four and a half minutes of clock. Washington will kick off now to Stanford, having put themselves back in a virtual tie. Two field goals, touchdown, missed two-point try for the extra, and it's 14-12. That's a long, deep kickoff going beyond the field of play by John Anderson. So John, who has two long field goals today, now hammers it through the end zone. Stanford ball from the 20. And 41 seconds to go in the first half, and coming up the middle with it is Coy Wire, who's having a good day. And Wire is thrown out of bounds as he gets to the 36 yard line. And a first down for the Cardinal. Stay with the run. Goodness. Lester Towns has a greeting for Coy Wire. <laughs> and it is simply this bring help when you come to my neighborhood. Be brave, Coy Wire. That's a bad neighborhood. Man, look at this hit. Watch number 17. Glaspie doesn't get much of a block there, and number 17 knocks number 22 backwards. Loss of a yard on the play, second down, 11. decided to go to the World Wrestling Federation and pull out a body slam. Watch number nine here on Durrani Pitts. Right about here, the whistle blows because Pitts' forward progress has been stopped. Now he's out of bounds, and now he's down well outside that three-yard barrier. So the big penalty hits the Huskies hard and makes it first down Stanford at the Washington 48-yard line. Critical mistake by Washington there. First down and good field position now for the Cardinal. And again, it's a blitz by Washington. Allen pops loose, missed tackle by Akeem Akbar. And now Curtis Williams just gets enough, or does he? I don't think Allen ever stepped out of bounds. I think that's a touchdown. I didn't think he stepped out <laughs> watching it, and we saw it on the replay, and it certainly didn't look like he stepped out up on the big board. That was a blow, but again, we were moving the ball so effectively, both on the ground and through the air, 
uh, we expected that to continue. No, obviously, there's always bang bang plays, but Brian definitely stepped out on the sideline. I mean, we were all right there, and uh, everyone was saying he stepped out, he stepped out, and so we felt shoot. They're, they're yelling it, they saw it, and for us, it was good. Daniels, number 24, linebacker, was the first man in front of the stack and spoiled the play for Allen. Keith, remember, they said that Allen stepped out of bounds at the 16-yard line. We'll slow this down. This is the 20-yard line right there. Here's the 16. Let's see if his foot does go out of bounds right there. I don't think so. him out of bounds and that's going to put him out at about the four yard line and it'll be first and goal. Anthony Von True had a hold of him but he ran right out of his arms. He's like all good running backs. You've got to have vision. Watch number 17. Allen sees Towns coming. He heads the other way. That's not only good vision. That's very very intelligent. It's called mortal fear. <laughs> Just inside the four, first down and goal, Stanford. 147. Allen again. He loses as he goes down at the 17. Lester Towns got him, but Larry Triplett and Jeremiah Farms were people who were throwing arms at him. Way to go, Jeremiah! And had him uh, off balance for the time Towns got him. And Triplett is uh, filling in for Mac Tuaia, a defensive end. They're going to move him around a little bit today. Bring him over the center in his normal nose guard position, but Triplett has turned out to be the most valuable of the defensive linemen for the Huskies this year. Minute 15 to go in the first half. Second down and goal, Stanford from the Washington five. Hitch is the wide man on the left. They stay with the ground game. Coy Wire will get it down to the one yard line. And it will be surely time out here for Stanford. Maybe not. There's 55 seconds to go. They've got three to play with. And you know Stanford knows uh, that uh, Larry Triplett is their best defensive lineman this year. Watch Jeff Kronshagen here gets a help with Zach Quasha. And Eric Heitman gets a shot at number 70 as well. It is Washington that takes the timeout at 49 seconds. Third down and goal, and they mark the ball back on the two yard line. They run it again with Meyer. And he's taken down right about the line of scrimmage. So it is fourth down and goal at the two, and the clock is ticking along. You wonder about uh, that play selection. In fact, the last three plays have been all running plays for Stanford. Uh, they have not moved Husak out of the pocket at all. Maybe his wide receivers are uh, starting to feel the ill effects of their injuries that uh, they came into the game with. That was a Washington timeout. Hey, B, make a play. Not a stand. So maybe they're going to go for three. Who knows? We'll see. I know it's a series of funny plays by Stanford to me, Dan. I well, last time they were down here, they uh, they felt uh, that they could push it across. They had some success last week against SC with Coy Wire. Remember, they had a touchdown taken away from them when the official thought that Brian Allen stepped out of bounds. But I still want to go back to uh, that penalty by Akeem Akbar that gave uh, the Huskies field position and a first down. If he doesn't commit that penalty, it's third and ten, and momentum, uh, momentum stays on the side of the Huskies. Well, if you kick the field goal here, you go to the clubhouse with a five-point lead. If you can make it, make it 17 to 12. If you try to run it in or throw it in and don't make it, it's a two-point lead. So they're going to go for the field goal. And Baselli's only missed once out of seven tries this year, and that one was a 47-yarder last week against SC. This will be 19 yards. They'll put it down on the nine, and now you got a penalty flag. you got another one from the other side. This appears to be an illegal substitution against Washington. You break the huddle with 12 men, you're going to get nailed. Dead ball. False start. On the offense. Five-yard nope. penalty. 
It's against Denver. You know, that penalty really doesn't hurt because it improves the angle for Baselli. So I'm sure it wasn't on an intentional penalty, but nonetheless, I'm sure Baselli likes it. Yeah, he probably likes the angle better. Here. 24 yards now. 34 seconds remaining on the first half. Play. Low kick. He got it. And our defense stopped them. And that was huge. The game doesn't get out of reach, doesn't get out of hand, keeps us in the game. And we knew it was going to be a battle. We just wanted to be close. And we wanted to you know, feel good about ourselves running up the tunnel. And you know, that helped us with our second half. And so at halftime, it is Stanford 17 and Washington 12. What can you tell us about Marcus? How did he feel during the half? Well, he's hurt his hip a little bit. It's not, it's a muscle thing, so it's just a pain tolerance, and I know him, he'll find a way to keep playing. Does that mean you're going to have to cut down on his option running? Well, I, I, I could say I'd like to, but I don't know that we can. we got to keep playing how we play. Good luck to you. Thank you. Coach Axman and I, I don't think we sat down that whole game, and part of the reason, or the big reason, was they didn't want me to get stiff, or they didn't want the swelling to, to overtake my leg where it wouldn't matter what medicine they gave me. He couldn't sit down. I mean, this kid was so tough. He couldn't sit down. It hurt so badly. And he had to keep walking. Even when he was off and this offense was off the field, he had to keep running and jogging on the sideline to keep it from tightening up on him. And so he just was like my companion. We just kept talking. He just kept encouraging me to keep fighting and, and let's go win this ball game. It'll be real interesting to see how effective uh, Marcus is coming out here to start the second half. The Huskies will get the ball. And the first possession of the second half, can mean a ton. We saw it last week that it meant a lot. So here we go. Second half. Kickoff settles in the arms of Terry Tharps. And he's decked. Willie Hurst will come out, set up in the backfield with him, and they start in the shotgun. Down the middle, intended for Elstrom. He was open, and he missed it. So after the opening play in the shotgun, they send him back on the center and stack the backs with the first deep. And Tuiasa Sopo slips and almost falls down and now takes off on a broken play. That's when he scares you to death, and that's what Stanford worries about. He just seemed to have an innate ability to know where the hole was and to know when to keep the ball and when to not. And he also had a real fearlessness running it. He did not really care if he got hit. He would take the chances and take the gamble. So he always had to, had to defend the whole field with him. Even though playing sore, he didn't hesitate when he saw the opening and realized he was subject to the pressure from the big guys. Pretty good athletic move right here, being able to keep that knee six inches off the turf, or they would have been down there for the sack. And now the 19-yard run pushes him over 100 yards rushing on one leg. 39-yard line, first down for Washington. Still got it. Lee's after it. Gets it away. They give him the catch down at the 37-yard line. Gerald Harris comes up with another big catch for Washington. This is a great job. Watch Tui Asisopo signal to Harris to come on back. Watch his left hand. Come on back to me, he says. Harris does. Marcus throws him the ball, and he just barely gets inbounds. It's first down, Huskies. Steen is the first man to get to him. The ball pops out of the stack. They're fighting for it. Real Johnson, number 97, right there, as, long, as well as Sharkus Steen. The ball is loose. Clearly a fumble, but that uh, opportunistic Stanford defense comes up big again. And they have the ball first down at their own 31 yard line. Todd Husak has Brian Allen behind him. Allen has the ball running in the middle. And number 93. Haley is there to make the tackle. Usak has the ball slapped down by Larry Triplett. 
Larry Triplett playing at a defensive end position today had looped around. He was engaged with the fullback on the block, but reached up and slapped it down. Here he is, number 70. Gets off the block of Kronshagen. He's got containment to the outside. Saw the back swing behind him and almost came down with that ball. Got two hands on it. It is third and eight for Stanford. Crowd coming up to help the Husky defense. No backs. Ball is thrown in the middle. It is caught by Durante Pitts. Durante Pitts will pick up the first down for the resourceful Stanford Cardinal. For Sonny, uh, ex quarterback, was in the backfield that time, and then came out and went down the field from the outside or tight end position. He's been playing some tight end. Look what Husak's staring at. That's Jabari Issa with the free run on the quarterback. Husak has to look all the way back to the left side to find Durrani Pitts. Good play in the secondary. Watch the block here. That's an illegal block there. Well, actually, it's not because the ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage by Troy Walters. Zach Quatcher had a big block on the play. Troy Walters gets this reception at the 40-yard line and just over it. And they'll mark it. Another first down for Stanford at the Husky 39. First down from the 39. Ball is given away to Brian Allen. Allen runs past that first tackler. Plus the second tackler and picks up another Stanford first down. So the Cardinal now showing some explosiveness as they move it down to the Washington 26. Rick Neuheisel told Todd Harris they got to tackle better. Well, the other thing they got to do is they got to get in position to make a tackle. This is Daryl Daniels here. Watch number 24. He's got Brian Allen, doesn't he? Allen with a little dip and a little burst to the outside. He's got a first down. This is coming off a turnover, remember. Stanford intercepted a pass in the uh, first half and scored. Now they've recovered a fumble and looking to do the same thing as they throw the ball to Durante Pitts. Touchdown! We thought we could take advantage of their safety play, and, you know, look off one side and come back to Durante, and uh, that was the case. And actually, on the replay, we, you know, when we broke down film the next day, I probably should have gone to the tight end. Uh, it's tough to go away from Durante, though. Such sure hands and a strong receiver over the middle. So. I looked off the safety one way, came back to Durrani, made a guy miss. Looking back, it probably, I probably should have gone to the tight end, Steve Cochran. It is 23-12 after a 69-yard six-play drive. Washington didn't have much luck stopping Stanford that day, and Washington actually fell behind 23 to 12. And no question, there, there was an awful lot of back and forth by the two teams, and there was a time there when it looked like Stanford was in control of the game. Handed off to the up man, Conniff. And Pat Conniff will wedge it out to about the three. Go back to the Stanford touchdown. Yeah, and I want to take care of your big, your big uglies, Keith. The guys up front. Stanford has thrown the ball about uh, 250 times today. Look at this pass protection for Todd Husek. He sets his foot, steps forward, finds a wide open receiver, but he couldn't do that unless the big guys up front are giving him that time. You happy now? Yes, yes. I like that. I like it. I really like it. Well, I loved him too. Believe me. <laughs> Uh, Lifesavers. Second down and eight out of the end zone to Yasa Sopo. Let's it go up the sidelines. It's overthrown. Ball was intended for Dane Looker, number 80. Covered on the play by Tim Smith and Aaron Fort. Yasa <laughs> Sopo out of the end zone, throws it hard. Penalty flag. Ruben Carter's going to get flagged here, I think, perhaps for interference. The Husky receiver getting up very tenderly. That would be Gerald Harris. Two officials over there threw the flag instantly. That is a huge call in the ball game because it moves it out 15 yards. Washington has it first down. And the penalty happened on third down if that ball was incomplete. Pass interference on the defense. First and 10 at the spot of the foul. Good pass protection for Tuiasa Sopo. Let's check out this pass interference. A little bit of a push, but I've seen a whole lot worse than that. So that gives the Huskies the first down out of the 12-yard line, and they 
hand it inside with Tuyasa Sopo dropping back and carrying out the fake well, but Stanford didn't buy it. And Mosho is stopped after a yard or so by Sam Benner. One thing Stanford's defense has got to be careful of is when they rush Marcus Tuyasa Sopo is to stay in their lanes, not be too anxious to get to him because even with the bad leg, he's shown that he can break that pocket and, and make big gains. Second down and nine, they call it. Option. Keeps it. He got a terrific block to get him around the corner from Dane Looker, it looked like, number 80. I couldn't tell you the number of times where he would just go up there, look at our defense, and check to the option, and we just could not stop it. They had a great offensive game plan, and, and they needed him to execute it. So when he did go down with the injury, we thought we had a huge advantage there. And then he comes back and has a performance for the ages. Elstrom was also over there in the, in the neighborhood, and so was Harris. But Tuiasa Sopo looks pretty limber to me for having been dragging that leg and hip around in the close of the first half. Lou Heisel told us it was important that his team has a good trainer. Here are a couple of good blocks on the outside by the wide receivers. Gerald Harris working on Reuben Carter. Look to the sidelines, pass is caught by Manuel Austin. And Austin is right on the first down marker again at the 48. And they'll move the chains. First catch of the year for Manuel. Not bad. Catch your first ball. You get a first down and get to go to the sidelines, get a cup of water. Without the coach yelling at you. <laughs> he's got a lot of guys that, he, that he's been yelling at today. Throws it quickly, throws it to Jeremy Stevens, the tight end. And Stevens is brought down by Stockbauer. And Stockbauer will have a uh, half a dozen yards on the play. Tuyasa Sopo's pass is good to the sideline. Ball caught by Dane Looker. So they're nickel and diving Stanford right now and doing a nice job of it moving the ball. And what Stanford is in is their uh, very uh, recognizable bend but don't break defense. This is what they'll do. They give up a ton of yards. They've given up more yards passing this year than any team in the Pac-10 coming into today. And uh, Tuiasa Sopo has already hit him for 219 yards. Stanford leading 23-12 here in the third quarter in Seattle at Husky Stadium. All goes to Mo Shaw. And Shaw hit first by Steen, then by Stockbauer, the two linebackers. Ball is at the 30. And that's a pickup. A good six, seven yards. Second down and three. Johnson comes up into a down position. Option. That got him going. There's Manu to Yasusopo. Marcus dead. We had designed a play during the week that we thought we could take advantage of what Stanford was doing on defense called the G option. They thought by the design of the run that we were running a different play. I'm running the ball and we got an extra blocker. A great call at the right time, and I was able to you know, get the ball downfield and get it into the end zone. That was a lot of fun. Offensive line coach and assistant head coach Keith Gilbertson told us yesterday that the guard option will be a play that Stanford is not ready for. Gets right on the linebacker Johnson. There's no support on the outside, and Tuiasa Sopo is in with another touchdown. The one run I really remember is kind of going into the closed end of the field where he took off, and, and you watch it on, on the tape, and it's like there's nobody there. He's, he's running wide open. And it's one of those that you watch the play, and you would probably go, anybody could have made that play. But it's the setup to getting that situation where there's nobody there that Marcus Tuiasasopo is really good at. And we've got a four-point ball game. 
I know the offensive guys looked at each other and, all right, this is not going to be easy by any stretch. We're going to have to score some more points because it looks like they're rolling on offense on the other side. So I think we understood that there was some pressure on us to continue to score points because our defense was having trouble with Tuias Sopo. You're down five. How come you don't go for two? Keith, you have to go for two in that case. One point doesn't do you any good. It gets you within four points, but a two-pointer obviously gets you within three. The book says when you're down by five, you go for two. I think Rick asked that same question. <laughs> How come we didn't go for two? It's Troy Walters a yard deep in the end zone. Look out. 15-yard line. Fumble the ball, and Stanford's recovered it. Ball popped out as Walters was spun around, but there was a white shirt right on it. As the ball. Barnes throws him down hard. And the dogs go to bark at big play by Jeremiah Farms. That's what the crowd wanted to see, a stop and then a, a demonstrative tackle. into the stack. If he'd have bounced a little bit, he might have found some daylight. Second down, nine. Coy Wires the running back. Cusack throws it quickly. It's incomplete. Durante Pitts, I think, was the intended receiver. Stanford comes up on the 15-yard line, third down and nine. Cusack has time. Throws the ball and the pass is caught by Durrani Pitts and Stanford's off the hook. This is one cool cat in the pocket. Todd Husak, after a play action fake, had pressure, was uh, very cool, stepped up, and I told you he has all the throws. He drilled that ball to Pitts for a very, very important first down. Pitts is on the outside, number two. Watch this ball comes in low for Texas receiver. Six catches, 79 yards for Durrani Pitts. First down, Stanford beyond the 30 as Husak goes to the left side. He looked right, looked center, and then came back left again to Pitts. And they get something out of it. Down and one now for Stanford, and Husak stays in the game. He's all right, gives the ball to Coy Wire. Wire, who's having a good thumping day, will pick up a first down around the 46-yard line. Coy Wire is six-footer, 215-pound junior out of Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Keith, the reason that Todd Husak was limping is because big number 70, Larry Triplett. Watch him here as after the throw, he fights off the cut block there by Quasha, and now he's going to go after the quarterback. He might have twisted his ankle. They play on a rug here in Seattle, artificial turf. So sometimes you stick to it. Brian Allen is back in the backfield. The ball is thrown again over to Durante Pitts. And Pitts almost had a face mask there. Now you get a couple of penalty flags uh, thrown. And uh, Pitts has got yardage for the first down. But and Towns is going to give him an extra 15 yards tacked well, on to the end of this play. Either it could, it could be inadvertent. Well, tell that to Durrani Pitts. Yeah. This is a quite a swat right across the uh, face mask. Watch number 17 here with the right hand as Pitts cuts to the inside. My goodness. Should have knocked him out. Face mask. Against the defense, it's a five-yard penalty tacked on the other run. First down. Hey, that hurt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a swat. 37-yard <laughs> line and the first down. Durante Pitts now has reached 100 yards receiving today. Not bad for a guy in the game. And I'll tell you what, Larry Triplett just ate up Brian Allen behind the line of scrimmage, and as lucky Allen is, he didn't fumble the ball. Because Triplett was all over it. And remember, Triplett's playing defensive end here and not his normal nose guard position, but he has the quickness to get into the backfield and then he makes a sharp cut. We talk about running backs making cuts, but Triplett planted, saw the running back, and came down and closed in and got him for a loss. Six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. 
Second and 13. That ball's not well thrown. And it is incomplete. Third down and 13 for Stanford at the Husky 40. Coming. Balls away. Ball goes to Troy Walters. And Walters is nailed by Jeremiah Farms. Yeah, it's that screen pass again. Look at the offensive lineman going downfield. Good job by Farms. That's what you call scouting report. Now, on a third down and long like that, go ahead and let them complete that little pass. We'll tackle them before they can get to the first down yardage. Baselli is out on the field now with a kicking tee out there. And they're going to try one. It looks like they're going to put it down at the 40. And that will be a 50 yarder. And I don't know if the wind, wind swirls around here. Sometimes it can be a help sometimes going that way. Anytime you have fourth and six, and team, if they're desperate to go for it, you're like, man, you know, they, they, can, they can get it. But as soon as I brought the field goal team out, I was just hoping, please, get, get this guy rattled, get enough push up the middle to maybe that he can push it wide or he can miss it. Busak's hold is good. The kick is away. It looks short, and it is short. So the Huskies rise up, stop Stanford, and take the football. It'll be first down Washington at their own 33 yard line with 520 to play in the third quarter and Stanford leading 23 19. Well the Huskies take over that football in very good field position. He wants to throw it down the middle. He does. Goes to his tight end. And Jeremy Stevens makes the catch. And it's first down Washington at the Stanford 45-yard line. Jeremy Stevens uh, came into the University of Washington as a six-foot, eight-inch quarterback. And uh, they found out in the spring season that maybe he should be better suited as a tight end. So Jeremy was put there, and all of a sudden had begun blossoming, catching the football from markets to Iasisopo, and became his favorite target. And certainly in the Stanford game, he was an enormous weapon. If Tui wasn't running it, he was looking for Jeremy downfield in the slot. And you get the feeling, the sense of the game right now is Stanford is hanging on, and the Huskies are the attacker. The Cardinal give up an average of 473 yards in total offense to their opponent each game. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo is already over 400 yards in total offense by himself. Well, uh, has a broken tackle. And Mo Shaw is finally hauled down on the 30-29 yard line. Rial Johnson had a pretty good piece of him and he just ran out of his arms. It makes you wonder how many times Stanford can come up with a timely defensive stop. Right now, the Huskies are being more physical up front. They're giving Tuiasa Sopo time to throw and that's a, a huge hole on the left side. For Mo Shaw. And I think uh, Rick Neuheisel is happy to have him doing this kind of a thing because it's lessening the risk on his quarterback playing with that sort of crump. And the ball again to Mo Shaw. And Mo's a, a big old thumper. He'll take it all day long and just beat on you. That's a pretty good battle, isn't it? Uh, the, sure. the tailback, the big thumper against the uh, big hitter in the linebacking core for Stanford, Sharkestein. That was a classic battle right there. I think you got to give the nod to Shaw because he fell forward. It'll be second down, and though it says five, it's closer to six. was the intended receiver Falk defending you know Aaron Falk showed up last week hadn't played much he played well against Southern California he's playing well again today he was a wide receiver this is his second start and twice today Aaron Falk has made perfect uh, his timing has been absolutely perfect in knocking the receiver just as the ball is getting there John Anderson back on stage 
40 yard field goal try so he's gone 49 and 40 already today. John Anderson has ice flowing through his veins. What he did his freshman year is unbelievable. He's unflappable. So we knew if John had to go make a big kick that he would. Kicks away. Rick is a good motivator, and Tui is a tough competitor, and, and the other guys on the team as well. And there was an attitude of, we're not going to lose this, and we're all for each other, and we're going to get this done no matter what it takes. Well, I hate to keep beating on an old tub, but the lone undefeated team in the Pac-10 standing, Stanford is leading by only a point. The Washington Huskies clearly have momentum now in this ball game, and they get possession at their own 28-yard line after a short punt. They're going toward the lake. That means they're going against the wind. Ball is handed off inside to the fullback Pat Conniff, and he rumbles first down to the 39 yard line. Frank Primus brought him down. The first option of the triple option is the dive play. Here it is right here and then cutting back by Conniff. Watch the linebackers. They're more concerned with Tui Asisopo going to the outside and Tim Smith has to come back and dive and get help from Frank Primus. But uh, can you really blame them though. I mean Tui Asisopo has been killing them on the option to the outside. Stevens the tight end down at the Stanford 43 yard line at a first down for the Huskies. Keith, I was wondering when they were going to start getting uh, Jeremy Stevens more involved in the passing game. Only had seven catches on the year coming into the season, three of them for touchdowns, but today he has been operating over the middle. This is his fourth catch on the day, and now Tui Asisopo has got himself a new record. 425 yards total offense. First down at the Stanford 43. Jeremy Stevens a big target 6 7 2 20. This is the option with Marcus keeping and he'll get down to about the 37 yard line before Stockbauer brings him down. The Husky total offense record was 419 held by Gary Conklin set in 1989 by the Huskies against Arizona State. And now Marcus Tuiasasopo owns it. Second and four. Oshaw deep. Take Tuiasasopo. Throws. Caught. Big play. Jeremy Stevens again. All the way down to the 14 yard. Stanford. Two passes in a row now to the big six foot seven tight end. Here he is here coming come across the field. And remember how many times today Aaron fought number 26 has made a play on the ball with perfect timing. This time he's stumbling. He does not have that timing. Stevens has the ball and the Huskies are rolling. Looker. And Elstrom are going to be the wide people now when we come back and you look at your wide shot. There's two wide outs up there. And they run the ball in the middle with Mo Shaw. Stevens five catches for 88 yards. That's a lot for a tight end. That Husky offensive line's done a good job up front against Willie Howard and Andrew Curry. Jeremy Stevens with a little Halloween makeup, perhaps. <laughs> Just short of the 10 yard line. Get an early start on the festivities. Look what he do. They win this ball game. They'll hold it. Elliot, give it to big old fullback. No, took it out. Kept it. Touchdown. The first option out of the triple option is a 
a little bit of the old belly where you run along with that full back, stick it in there, and then take it out. And he took it out, kept it, and Washington takes the lead for the first time today. He just had a real confidence running it. He, he could just make the decisions like that. You were never really completely sure what he might do with it. If he needed to run it 20 times, he would. He would take the chances and take the gamble. So you always had to had to defend the whole field with him. You know, option offense you know, it was just something that Stanford had to worry about. That spent time in practice. It just helped us become more multiple. And I ended up scoring two touchdowns on, on option runs. You've got 9.54 to play in the ball game. So there's a lot of time left to dance. Let's see what happens here from the Husky 47 yard line. They run it with Brian Allen. He's got a little room. out of bounds just about a 10 yard pickup mark is right on the 37 good job of that offensive line getting a push getting a stalemate and allowing Allen to just run along the line of scrimmage and see where the hole is he bounced it all the way to the left side when that play was designed to hit to the right guard senior Offensive line led by Mike McLaughlin making his 42nd consecutive start for the Cardinal. They know the onus is on them right now to get the lead back for Stanford. It is a first down for Stanford. Joe Fairchild, number 67, he's in there at a guard position right now. Well, the Cardinal trying to rest some of the big guys. Get some fresh legs into the ball game as well. Get a little weary too. Everybody but Mike McLaughlin, I think. <laughs> Allen. Lester Towns is right there. Like a great big old tree, just ate him up. Towns back in the game after uh, having a sore toe worked on on the sidelines. Here he is. There he is, rather, right out here to the outside. This is not a good handoff. Town scrapes to the outside there. Actually, I had him in the uh, right circle the first time. He had the running back in his right circle the last time. And the loss of three yards on the play, where it's second down and 13, back at the 40. Usak with time, touches the ball down. Picked off by Anthony Von Tour. That is the second interception today. So the interception was on the same exact play that Ronnie Pitts had scored on earlier in the game, and it was the four verticals. And actually, uh, Steve Coughlin had come back to me at tight end and said, I was wide open on that play, so next time we run that, look for me. Just a bad decision by me. I tried to force it in there to my guy and uh, paid the price for it. Anthony's second pick, it was just huge. When we needed someone on the defense to step up again, he was right there to bring us back. As we were running off the field, when the defense was running on, they would tell us, hey, get ready to go. We're going to get the ball back for you, all right? And we knew once they did that and they were able to get the ball back to us, that we had to score. They give it back to Washington at the Husky 12, first down. And Washington will go to the ground game and Mo Shaw. Mo will fight his way out near the 22 before he finally surrenders, and that's close to a first down. So now Washington taking over the ball. So they'll run it on uh, back across the field, and California going up to Corvallis, huh? Might, uh, California's defense pretty good, but the Oregon State offense, that old single back stuff still works, what? Yeah, it does, and the Beavers are learning how to win now, how to finish the deal. On the uh, snap, they just simply go for the first down, on second down, and a couple of inches, and they get it. And so they've got four more snaps, and the clock shows five minutes and 18 seconds to play in the ball game. And uh, the momentum right now belongs to Washington. There's no question about it, because Stanford had a very good opportunity. 
on that last possession and gave it up on the Husky 12. Willingham looking for his defense to come up with a timely defensive play one more time. You just wonder when they uh, have gone to the well one too many times. Moshaw is the deep back. He gets the ball. And Stanford grabs a hold of him. Dewey Asasopo, 302 yards in the air this week. He had 300 last week. It's the first time he's had back to back 300 yard games. And the first time Washington has had it since Sonny's six killer back in 1970. And Marcus is showing you how as he shows his hip pockets again to the Cardinals and picks up another first down. You mentioned that name, Sonny Six Killer Keith, and that sends shivers through my bones. I played against Sonny for four years, and uh, he came out on top of three of those. He's sitting next door to us calling the game uh, for the Huskies today, but uh, you talk about a great competitor. I think that some of his magic that he used to weave here at Husky Stadium has rubbed off on this young man. Where is he from? Wapato? He's from Ashland, Oregon. Ashland, Oregon. 202 yards rushing, 302 yards passing today. A total of 500 yards for Marcus Tuyasasopo. That's Oshaw. Right now, what time? Time, time, time. Ain't no bottle available to Stanford. In the second half of this ball game, they've been all over Husek. Second down and six. You gotta have it takes nerve to take on Stanford and play him that way, I'll tell you that. And just working the ball and working the clock. 255 and running. Stanford's got to start thinking about using their last time out here. This is the biggest play of the game coming up right now. If they have Stanford has any chance of winning this game, they have got to prevent this third down conversion for Washington. This is it. Aaron Falk was there first to get a piece of him. And it just depends where the man in the striped shirt puts the ball. Late in the game, we had a third and five, and coach calls an option. And we all looked to each other and said, let's go get it. And snap. All right, run the play. There's a seam. I hit it, and I'm driving. I just want to get to five yards. I'm just thinking in my brain, get there, get there, get there. And I know I'm close. They tackle him on the ground, and of course I look at it, I'm thinking, man, it's gonna be close. Uh, seconds were like minutes when they were looking at that ball. This is as close as it could possibly be, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's two inches short. It was the guard option again. Stanford finally had an answer for it. They brought the safety, fought up to the line of scrimmage, but was it in time? Darn it, just one inch. What do you do, coach? Give him the first down. How? How does that happen? How is that not fourth down? As soon as they decided that it was a first down, they saw that it was a first down, and he said, first down, and you know, move the chains, do the first down signal. Man, it was such a, a load off our backs. We're like, oh, whew, we got it. I have seen some strange things in this stadium. That was the strangest. Doesn't matter, however, what we might conclude because uh, it's first down Washington and uh, now Stanford will spend the time out. And uh, we've got a minute and 38 seconds to play in the football game uh, with Washington leading 28-23. And the Huskies are in pretty good shape on second down and eight now. Stanford. Out of timeout. No more. Moshaw. Moshaw's gone. That'll do it. Touchdown. I 
remember just getting, staying snap and just taking off. And of course, the fullback goes in one hole, there's a big hole there, and he blocks his guy, and I could have ran that way. But of course, again, I missed the hole and went through the other way, but it still happened that I hit the hole so fast that by the time I broke through, you know, it didn't really matter because towards, once I broke through the hole, you pretty much going to catch me behind. And I was pretty fast at the, um, once I got into the open field. I remember Keith Gilbertson walking on that sideline with his hands in the air. If you can run the blast, you last. And it was a great moment for uh, those of us who got a chance to watch it happen. Being at home, being in that type of game in that moment, it was, it was pretty extraordinary. I think that year was the first year we had the Jumbotron where you could see, you know, the action on the field. I remember just running. I happened to glance up and, you know, I saw the guys chasing me and I was just like, you have kept moving. But I didn't slow down though. Well, you know, just kept going to make sure I got to the end zone and put that thing away. Bo is gone and we've got a race in the Pac-10. Stanford crowds the line of scrimmage trying to force some type of turnover. Shaw gets into the secondary and that's all she wrote. And I hope somebody donates an ice bag for Marcus Tuiasi Sopo for that sore keister. He'll be fine until about a quarter to two in the morning, or three, and then Yahoo. I remember looking up in the fourth quarter at the scoreboard and thinking, wow, we had 500 plus yards. It's a pretty good, pretty good game for us. And we look over and they had like 600 plus. It's just like, oh my gosh, what a game he played. And uh, I mean, what a tremendous athlete and competitor he was. I was actually in the post game press conference and our SID had come up to the table. I was sitting there with Coach Neuheisel and he just goes, have you realized what you've done? And I was thinking to myself, we, we won a game. We beat the first place Stanford. This is great. He goes, no. He goes, from a statistical standpoint, no one's ever thrown for 300 yards and rushed for 200 yards in one game. And you know, at the time, I was so overjoyed and, and just so fired up that we'd won the game. Like, I didn't really care. This game was so special for Washington football because of the individual performance of Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. But I think it also set building blocks for Washington to eventually become Rose Bowl champions and the number three ranked team in the nation a season down the road. I think it said to people that we can get it done, that no matter how far down we are, how injured we are, how beat up our team is, we can get this done. We're going to fight back. From a personal standpoint, I've never seen a more courageous football leader than Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. And that just really reinforced it, that performance against Stanford that day. How could this guy get off the deck time and again with this wounded leg and do the things he was doing? Football is an ultimate team sport, too. But on the day, there were 22 men on the field, and only one stood above everybody else. And that was Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. And this one is history. Washington wins. Big win for Rick Newhouse. Big win for the Huskies. Big win for the Pac-10. It is a battle up and down. Great ball game.